started off, she started developing puberty type of signs. So we took her into our family doctor and they decided that we should see an endocrine specialist. So we brought her up here and um, we didn't know what to expect and we did the CT and the MRI and we got a phone call that afternoon that she had a three, um, I think they said three centimeter um, tumor in her adrenal glands. So um, from there, he said, I've already called the surgeon. He says, this is when surgery is going to be. And we came in and did surgery. They did another CT. And at that point, they found the spots in her lungs. We came in and had the lung surgery because the spots never went away. And we found the same type of cancer in her lungs. So we kept monitoring her. And there was one spot that was there that they couldn't get at that time. So we started with the chemo and the spot started to shrink and they didn't expect that because usually this is a very resilient cancer. Um, so it shrank to the point where Dr. Pagoli says, I want to go in and try to take it again. So he went in and he removed that spot and when they were diagnosing that, doing the pathology, the cancer was undetectable because the chemo had worked so well. Every time she sees him, she just, you know, goes right up to him and plays and talks to him. There's no hesitations. And he's the same with her. He, you know, if he sees her when we were admitted, he would put her on his lap and show her scans on the computer and, you know, take her for a little walk around the nurse's station. And so, yeah, <laughs> definitely care we didn't expect. So <laughs> we were really pleased with how well everything was researched even though it was so rare. I mean, Dr. Bruckner went out of her way to make sure she was researching with other hospitals and cancer institutions to find out what best protocol we should follow. Um, she gave us printouts of everything that she found so that we could read through them. And then she gave us, you know, 24 hours or more to read everything over. And of course, by the time she came back in, we had a list of questions. <laughs> but she always sat down and went through every single one of them, no matter how crazy we thought they sounded. <laughs> So, and I mean, sometimes she didn't have some of the answers and she would research again to find what we needed to know. If we were in for like a neutropenia stay and she couldn't go out and play with other kids, the nurses would come in with syringes and we would play water guns in the bathtub with Haley. And I mean, they were wonderful. The different activities Child Life did was wonderful. I mean, if she was in her room stuck, they would bring activities in for her to do, like painting or making necklaces and jewelry and puzzles and books and Play-Doh and I mean they really made sure she kept busy. She's doing good. I mean she's really made big improvements within the last couple months. Um, we're cut back on our medications. We've only seen the doctors once a month. She was happy through all the treatments. She never once hesitated coming in. Even if she knew she was coming in to get chemo and could be sick, she came in and played and she didn't care. She was, you know, a kid. So I was glad she was able to have the childhood through the treatment.